Hello everybody and welcome back. In this video we're going to be walking through the custom tray tool in D3 Lab. Uh, in order to fabricate a custom tray we're going to need some sort of input model to use and the model we'll be using today is the one that we've uh, generated in earlier videos in this playlist. Uh, it's been through the uh, dental segmentation tool and then we've completed a virtual extraction on that model. So that's the model we'll be using today uh, for this example using the custom tray tool. So we'll start out like always by clicking on the tool that we'd like to use in the D3 lab menu, in this case custom tray. We'll make sure our model is loaded and ready to go and then we'll hit the go button to start the tool. In the first step, it's asking us to set the uh, insertion axis for the custom tray. Generally speaking, an occlusal view here is gonna work just fine, uh, but you can tweak that as you'd like. Once you feel comfortable with that view, you can hit next to kind of lock that in. That frame of reference is used later on to uh, determine where the undercuts are and to process those undercuts. So um, that's what that view is used for and we'll uh, use that later on down the road here. In this step, uh, it's asking us to draw the appliance uh, border, so the custom tray border here. Uh, if you have a model that you're using for potentially uh, removable dentistry, like uh, complete dentures or partial dentures, um, this initial default tool that allows you to draw around the model is going to come in so handy. It really allows you to kind of capture the, the contours and the depths of those vestibules so you get a nice looking uh, custom tray um, in those cases. In our case, we don't really have that, we don't really need that, and we have this segmented model. So we're gonna take advantage of that by double clicking on the gingiva. I'm gonna hit I to invert that selection. I'm gonna hold down Shift and hit the greater than sign. Every time I hit that greater than sign, it increases that selection just a little bit. For every one time I press it, it does one increment of uh, selection growth. Uh, conversely, if I do Shift and I press the less than sign, it will shrink that selection uh, in one increment for every key press that I do uh, with the less than sign. So it's just a quick way to kind of basically just select the teeth plus a little bit of a buffer room there. And that's looking pretty good for our needs. So we'll say that's fine. Uh, you can set the uh, tray thickness. You can also set the impression gap. And then um, you can also set the uh, undercut or block out uh, thickness there. Generally speaking, again, uh, the default value should be fine. It is now going through and locating the undercuts and applying the block out algorithm, which is essentially adding uh, a little layer of, of wax uh, simulated. And then on that innermost selection of that wax, it kind of deletes that out and just makes a flat plane. Uh, we do that in order to try to avoid bulkiness in the final custom tray while also uh, trying to maintain the uh, blocked out undercut. So it's doing that and processing the model at the same time. Um, another output of this tool is this blocked out model. So you can use that later on if you'd like. Uh, you don't need to use it. It's just copied and hidden. Um, so you can use that um, for a different tool or uh, something else down the road or just a 3D print. Um, but it's there if you'd like it. If not, you can just leave it hidden or just delete it. Uh, but it is part of the output. In this step, it's asking us to select our stops. So that would be like occlusal stops or tissue stops or anything like that. Um, generally, uh, a nice tripod will give us a good stable impression tray and will also uh, try to give us that, uh, that nice uniform thickness of impression material all the way throughout. So I'm just setting the, the three different areas here and then pressing next. You don't have to do any stops if you don't want to. Uh, you can just hit next without selecting anything and that will work fine. Uh, now it's asking us to do a perforation. Uh, if we'd like, again, you can just hit next and you don't need to do a perforation. But in our case, we're kind of um, hypothetically thinking this is a final tray for uh, like an implant crown or something like that. Uh, and then we need to modify the tray to allow for the uh, open tray protocol. So we're kind of doing this perforation selection right where the implant would be, 
uh, and will also kind of give us that room to uh, to take the impression with the impression coping there and everything like that. So no more need to do it chair side. You can just 3D print and have it ready to go. I'm also kind of making sure that that perforation isn't too close to the border of the tray. Uh, you don't want to accidentally kind of uh, make the tray into two pieces. If it's too thin there, if there's not enough room, it could develop a, an end product that's just two pieces because it got too thin there. So I was just making sure it wasn't too close to the border. After you set your perforation uh, or not, or multiple perforations, uh, any one of those three is just fine. You can hit next and it goes through the rest of the steps here of generating the, the offset for the impression gap and the thickness of the custom tray. And once this is done, it's going to be about 95% done. Uh, in some cases, it might even be completely done. Uh, I'll show you why it might be 95% in just a second here. Once it finishes up. OK, so there's our almost finished custom tray in some cases, uh, potentially completely finished. Um, I'm just checking right now for the, the offset there to make sure there's a nice space all the way around. So it's not touching the model. Uh, that looks good. That looks like what we set it to. Um, the last thing we probably want to do is add a handle here. So that would be that 95 to 100% there, making it to completion. I can hit the add handle button. All I need to do is just drag and drop this right onto wherever I'd like onto the model. Gonna set the location and the size of the handle. Because I feel like I have it in the right position. I can hit go. And then ask me to kind of refine that position if I'd like, but that looks good to me. So I'll hit finish here. Okay, so there you have it. You got your final product custom tray uh, with the stops and the perforations and everything like that. Um, so we're done here, um, but as a final check just for me, um, I'd like to, to kind of take a look at the intaglio side and make sure it looks like those stops are there. And I can verify that by using that little intersecting selection trick uh, that I talked about in a previous video. I think it was the flipper video at the end of that. If I have two models present in the scene here in Mesh Mixer with one active, I press S to activate the select tool and I can double click on the shadowed out model and then quickly hide that. And I can look at the active uh, object now and see where those two, uh, two objects were intersecting. And so that looks good to me. And that's exactly, exactly where we wanted our stops to be in only those locations. It also looks like there's no other areas on the tray that are uh, impinging on the model whatsoever. So that's exactly what we wanted. And it looks like a good result. So there we have it, that's the custom tray tool. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Appreciate your time and have a wonderful day.